So, um, this most special recognition and thanks that we have today is to once again recognize our own Mary Lawrence. Um, <laughs> And um, this summer, she was recognized once again for an amazing, uh, it was just another amazing contribution. So um, it was the Burton Awards. And for those of you who don't know or aren't as familiar, the Burton Awards for Legal Achievement were established in 1999 to recognize outstanding achievement and contributions to the law, particularly effective legal writing, also including legal publication and law reform. Um, those honored by the Burton Awards include law firm partners, law school students, and legal writing educators. These individuals are recognized for their use of plain, effective, clear, concise writing. They're also on the front lines and in the trenches of the plain English movement that is carrying us from dense, obscure, dull writing to clear, concise writing, and we're all uh, working on that. The founder, William C. Burton, is an accomplished lawyer. He's the author of Burton's Legal Thesaurus. He's an inspirational speaker, as many of us found a few years ago when the Legal Writing Institute gave him one of its uh, highest awards. His acceptance, acceptance speech was inspiring because it recognized that we do the most important work in the world and we have the coolest jobs. Um, this June, um, the Burton Awards were held in uh, Washington, D.C. Many of us were not able to attend, and so we thought that since we're all here together, let's just celebrate again. I almost wore my beaded dress and brought bow ties for you all today. So just imagine that we're in beaded dresses and, and bow ties. Thanks to Karen Michael, we have some fabulous pictures. I especially like this one of uh, Justice Sotomayor posing with Mary Lawrence. <laughs> um, um, the last person I've asked to speak is Ralph, who's going to talk about um, Mary's broader contributions to the National Liberal Rights. <laughs> I'd much rather talk about all the dinners that we've had together. <laughs> uh, they, they, if you haven't had that experience, uh, you look forward to it because you will. The title of this part of the program is very apt. Uh, it was, it's called Innovation, History, and the Future of Legal Writing. And Mary has surely been one of the most innovative people in the field. Uh, she has written about the history of the Legal Writing Institute. Karen's video of her and Marge Rambauer. Uh, her memory is incredible. She remembers every part of every, every event we've ever had, every conference we've ever had, and discusses it in detail in that video, which you can find on YouTube. And of course, the future. I heard several people at this conference talking about basically Mary's ideas of spiraling, of short assignments. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Mary came uh, to, to uh, Oregon after a long career teaching English and writing uh, at Michigan. She had a BA and a master's in English and she was for many years a coordinator of writing classes at Michigan English Institute. Uh, she wrote two books, Writing as a Thinking Process, that's a clue um, her process orientation in, in teaching legal writing, and reading, thinking, and writing on teaching English as a second language. They not only were adopted in many universities in the, this country, but in places like Japan, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, Iran, many other countries. As you know, she, she began in 1978 here, and she brought with her an insistence that we can't learn uh, by focusing on the production of a single document, but we must teach the process of thinking and writing, which she called spiraling. If you haven't heard her talk on spiraling, you have missed an incredible event. The first time I heard it at a Legal Writing Institute conference, Susan Brody and I, who were sitting next to one another, were both blown away by it. Um, Mary knew that students could not learn well a skill or a concept from a single encounter. She proved that they could learn the skill or the concept much better 
by an, an initial counter on a fairly simple level, and then circling back and dealing with a similar problem a bit more complex, and then another a bit more complex, which explains all those assignments that you had to teach <laughs> in that 1978 program. Um, as it spiraled each time, as she explained to Susan Brody once, they are unlikely to learn if, it well if you teach it only once. Thus, for the program at Oregon, students were taught the core principles of research, analysis, writing, and then required to circle back, to spiral through similar, more complex problems, gradually introducing administrative processes, statutes, and all the other uh, tools of research and also of analysis and writing. The program became quickly one of the best in the country. She hired full-time teachers. She trained full-time teachers. Uh, many of them were former students. And uh, she trained them to her very high standards at the delivery. <laughs> her leadership, of course, immediately took hold in the field. Uh, she became one of the early chairs of the section, uh, of the ALS section, uh, which was then called Legal Research Writing and uh, Reasoning. And she held two annual meetings, and then she was able to obtain from the ALS something that was almost unheard of. They had allowed one previous uh, three-day program. Uh, they didn't like legal writing very much, and they weren't willing to let us have any kind of a program that they gave to all kinds of doctrinal areas. But she somehow convinced them within about three years after that first one to hold another one. And there she introduced a lot of the very up-and-coming leaders in our field. I believe Anne was one of the speakers at that program. And um, many others, uh, Laurel for sure was. Um, the um, she was a frequent speaker, of course, at the Legal Life Writing Institute and later at Allwood. And she wrote many articles in the second draft and the journals. Uh, she, most importantly, she has continued to be a mentor to all of us, uh, formally and informally. The informal ones are even more fun because they're at these dinners <laughs> where she brings together all these people who share their ideas. Uh, and share their experiences and learn from one another in the setting of a fine restaurant like the Excelsior. Um, in 1996, Mary received the first Distinguished Service Award from the ALS section. In 2000, she received the inaugural Marge Rombauer Award from Hollywood. In 2010, the Liberal Writing Institute established the Mary S. Lawrence Award for Excellence in Scholarship. Oregon, of course, gave her the first Orlando John Hollis Award for Outstanding Teaching. It endowed a scholarship in her name upon her retirement in 2000. In 2010, Oregon gave her an award for meritorious service to the school and to the profession. And at that time, 16 of the leading people in legal writing wrote them, uh, uh, tributes to Mary, which was published in Seattle. Uh, lot of you, right? Last year, the ALS surprised Mary at the reception uh, by giving her the Legal Writing Institute an Allwood Joint Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, she was very, very surprised, <laughs> uh, extremely. We had to hide her for a while first to bring her up. For and then, of course, the fitting climax was the Burton Award last summer. The subtitle for the Burton Award for Legal Educators in Legal Writing is Legends in Law. There is no bigger legend in law. Yeah. Pringle uh, said when she presented the Burton Award to Mary this uh, summer in uh, Washington, D.C. at the Library of Congress. So imagine Anne Kringle, University of uh, Pennsylvania. I'm honored to present this award to Mary Lawrence, Professor Emerita at the University of Oregon School of Law. 
Mary Lawrence put the writing in legal writing. Her first career was teaching composition and English as a second language. Her early books, Writing as a Thinking Process and Reading, Writing, Thinking, I'm sorry, Reading, Thinking, Writing, were groundbreaking and popular books in those fields. Lawyers in the room will recognize that this was a valuable background when Professor Lawrence founded the legal writing program at the University of Oregon School of Law in 1978. Law has its own language and lawyers must be translators for many of their audiences. But the focus of legal writing was not on the audience. Legal writing was taught as a series of document forms that students should mimic. Professor Lawrence used her writing and discourse expertise to change the course's focus from the product to the process of composing. She taught her students to recognize that writing was not just something done to memorialize a final answer after all research and analysis were done. Writing was thinking. She developed a course that integrated analysis, research, and writing, teaching them together, first in simple assignments and then spiraling back in increasingly complex assignments. This spiraling was a, com a concept that she had early introduced in composition theory, but it was truly radical for legal writing pedagogy. That's hard for us to understand now because writing as a process is so firmly embedded in all the leading textbooks and in the legal writing courses taught at all law schools today. Our students are not just given a brief format and told to copy it. They're instructed in rule formation and synthesis, the application of rules to facts, and the essential structure of legal analysis. Their professors intervene in the writing process to critique, question, clarify the thinking and writing that they do. Writing faculty now pride ourselves on being some of the most innovative teachers in law school, and that's a tradition we can trace to Mary Lawrence. She built the program at Oregon that continues her proud tradition as one of the best in the country. Thank you. <laughs> Having created that program, she set about to share her ideas with the nascent legal writing world. Those who were teaching legal writing were mostly lawyers without English language and writing background. At countless conferences and in countless articles, she introduced them to that world and served as a mentor to most of those who became leaders in the field. She was a leader of the section of legal writing, reasoning, and research at the ALS and received its first Distinguished Services Award to the profession. She has since received almost every possible award for teaching and service in our field and from our, her institution. In fact, the Legal Writing Institute gives an award for scholarship that bears her name. I hope she's able to find room on her shelf for this latest, the Burton Award for Outstanding Contributions to Legal Writing Education. Now, at this point, they made an award, which I don't have because she has it. <laughs> but those of us who have known Mary for a while know that you don't do anything spectacular or make any kind of major achievement without receiving flowers. If you're lucky enough to live in Eugene, you get these flowers. <laughs> they are always beautiful. They're the multiple colors of roses. And whenever we see them in the building, we think, Oh, Mary sent flowers. Who did something great? <laughs> so now today we have flowers for Mary. <laughs>